Um, in the days before Ireland found a place within European film culture, genuinely innovative and serious Irish filmmakers were few and far between. And it's a great honour this evening to welcome uh, one such figure, George Morrison, to the Queen's Film Theatre here at Queen's University Belfast and to enjoy the screening of his remarkable 1961 film, uh, Saoirse. The title of this event and uh, the celebration of George's um, work is uh, An Irish Camera. And for many of us with a particular interest in Irish filmmaking, uh, George Morrison's name is synonymous uh, with films such as Misha Era, Saoirse and A Rebellion as well as works such as uh, Those Stones Remain, 2000 Miles of Pearl, and more recently, uh, Dublin Day, a documentary on the Dublin of James Joyce's uh, Life and Times, uh, which, which we could have screened two days ago on Bloomsday, uh, if we've been prescient enough. Um, it's important to point out, point out at the uh, onset, however, that there's more to George Morrison's career than his documentary filmmaking. He has uh, made over 20 films, and his prodigious photographic output over the years, his writings, archival, educational, and other cultural work is testament to his sustained contribution to modern Irish life and to how we see, remember, and imagine ourselves and our histories. Saoirse is generally assumed to be a sequel to Misha era, both films tracing the period from 1916 to 1922, the Easter Rising, the War of Independence, the Civil War. The films are particularly noteworthy for the use of found footage and um, how George Morrison configured and assembled such a diverse archive of images and sequences into compelling documentary treatments. The best film archive is the cinema itself and Saoirse does not disappoint in that regard. Comprising documents, photographs, drawings and cartoons, it both consolidates the pioneering work of early Soviet filmmakers such as Esther Shub while anticipating the expressive methods of figures such as Santiago Alvarez, uh, the great Cuban filmmaker. No introduction to Sorsha and Misha Era can overlook the contribution of Sean O'Reilly and George Morrison's success in inspiring and cajoling O'Reilly into producing one of the most memorable scores in the history of documentary film. O'Reilly's score, like uh, itself, uh, a, a kind of musical translation of found footage interweaves traditional idioms with orchestral arrangements and like the film itself consolidates a past and anticipates what was to, to become uh, what was to come in terms of traditional Irish music in the 1960s and after. Another important context uh, to bear in mind when watching this film I think is the role of Gail Lynn in the production and distribution of both uh, Sorsha and Misha Era. Uh, despite its critics, uh, Gail Lynn had quite a progressive and modern social vision that was uh, alert to both the dangers of ghettoising the Irish language and the need to ensure it had some secular space to develop, uh, that the fate of the language wouldn't be contingent on the fortunes of an excessively ethnocentric political culture uh, dominated by the intimacy between church and state. Gail Lynn then embraced film and documentary Cinema Verite, uh, while also refusing um, to allow subtitle prints of the film in any language for many years, which is hopefully something George might talk about after the, the screening. These films are um, sites of uh, uh, Misha Era and Sorsha, are sites of contestation, um, competition. Uh, they are um, very important in terms of understanding an Ireland that was uh, trying to mature and to develop into a self-sufficient and independent nation. Uh, they are, they, in a sense, stage uh, these conflicts between past and future, modernity and tradition, innovation and preservation. Sorsha has a question mark in its title. It does not pretend to be an answer or to close history. It is a film about the past, but that past is still very much part of our present, part of the history of today. The film's relevance to us now as a documentary then is both formal and uh, contextual. It is a treasure trove of images, music and language, but Sorsha is also a film that remains open to many questions.
Thank you again, George, uh, for coming uh, to Belfast and uh, for uh, being with us at the screening of of the, of, the, of uh, Sorsian. And uh, I just want to um, pardon. Sorry, just want to ask a couple of questions and then open to the floor if, if that's okay. Yes, I uh, may say that your screening now has given me such pleasure. <laughs> Uh, because I regard Michaela and Sirsha as of equal importance, mm -hmm. and one can't be understood without the other. Um, do, I mean, when, when people discuss the cinema of uh, Ireland, uh, qu quite often the emphasis is on. Uh, Ireland rather than cinema as such, so yes. it's how films illustrate and um, uh, represent history and that sort of thing. Mm. Um, one of the things that interests me about your work is that um, I think it's uh, quite influenced by other filmmaking styles and traditions and oh, culture. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yes. I just wondered if you, if you could talk a bit about that because I think yes. that's uh, so something in, in, in uh, the critical yes. treatment of your work uh, that's rarely was, acknowledged. Uh, I was when I had assembled the actuality material. Uh, I began at the catalogue resume yeah. of Irish actuality material in 1952, and when I had assembled sufficiently, it was obvious to me that the crude style, that the kind of treatment it should receive was more no nearly resembling the work of Eisenstein mm. or the, uh, uh, Pudovkin, yeah. and th this was reflected in my treatment. And uh, it was a decision which I made at an early stage, uh, and it was quite consistent. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, did you? I mean, there was a lot of documentaries uh, that were um, publicly funded um, uh, coming out of uh, England in the 1930s and, and 40s through the General Post Office and. Did, did you, I mean, were you influenced by, by those kind of documentaries? Sort of uh, not particularly. And, and uh, the, uh, uh, I was more influenced by the Soviets. Right, okay, yeah. Um, um, did, you, did you feel that your kind of approach to filmmaking was political in, in the way that their, their I, films I'm were? I'm sorry? Did you feel that your method was political in that sense, that it was a kind of dialectical and ideological kind of project, or was it the... Uh, uh, yes, the uh, it was. Montage? Uh, uh, it, it has its form, uh, uh, as you will notice, yeah. definitely structured along those lines. Okay. Um, just one other question before we, we, we open it up to, 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 to others. Um, the, the subtitling, I mean, one of the issues that com comes up in discussions about Misha Era and uh, Sersha is this um, the fact that Gail Lynn uh, refused um, s to subtitle the films for, for a long time. Oh. Were you well, happy with that? about that, the better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, has, has anyone any questions? I ask George. Hello, um, my name is Crow Rolihan. I'm from the Cultural and We'll be screening Mich Mich Era tomorrow after lunch. Ah. Just to um, point that Thank out. Thank you very much. But um, I wanted to ask you how how did you work with Sean Arida? Oh, marvelously! <laughs> Could anybody doubt that? No. no. Using the uh, information that I. We worked very closely together, as close as that, perfectly. And the result, you see. Okay. Any other um, 
questions yet? There's yeah, maybe if I could just ask you about the Sean Arruda um, collaboration. Did um, did he score the music to to the images, or how, how did that work? He scored the music to the images. Yeah, and brilliant. Yeah, in yeah, my yeah. opinion. Yeah, yeah. He, he couldn't be faulted. Yes. And did you? I mean, did you find that he was? Um, oh, uh, I may say that I spent. The music to this film I regarded as most important and the music to Saoirse I regarded as most important. That is the reason there are two different styles. Okay. One is hopeful yes. with Michaela. The other is fragmented and the harpsichord which he played himself emphasizes that particularly at the end of the film. Right, yeah. Disintegration, disintegration, disintegration. So the, um, that sense... A disintegration until the worst of social disasters, which is civil war. Yes, yeah. Um, when, when the film was, was released in, in 1961, I mean, what was your sense of how um, that contemporary Ireland uh, was dealing with the legacy of the Civil War? I, I'm not sure that I understand your question. Uh, when, when the film was first released in 1961, yes. okay, so uh, it was a kind of a it was to a generation, a post-Civil War generation. Yes. yes. How, how did they receive it? I mean, I mean, uh, seriously. Uh, they were disappointed that I hadn't maintained the heroic uh, and uh, uh, theme. But how can you yeah. uh, make a film about the Tan War and the Civil War and be heroic? Yeah. There's no way you can do it. Mm. So in, in a sense, the, the, the tragic uh, dimension to uh, Saoirse is, is what is maintained throughout that, that mood. Uh, I'm sorry? The, a tragic mood is maintained. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, that is the reason I use those long fade outs and fade ins yes. uh, in order to emphasize the degeneration, the fragmentation that took place. Okay. Uh, any, anyone want to ask any other questions? Yes, sorry. Okay. Uh, uh, I wonder, uh, could you speak a little louder, please? <laughs> Hello. Oh, I just thank wondering, you. Uh, George, um, I was wondering where the actual material, most of it, you came from. Actually, actually who was it people's collections or was it uh, state broadcasters or where? No. Uh, the major portions of it came from all three national collections, uh, commercial collections, and private collections. Uh, almost equally. Did, uh, did you find with when you you know in some of the photographs where you um, close in on particular images and you know, the still photographs uh, you know, with, you, you were quite expressive and poetic in the way that you, know, yes. you used them? I endeavoured to do so, and to uh, the episode like the swans yes. uh, are intended to convey a relaxation. And in my opinion, they do so. Mm. Um, I was just going to ask you one, one other point about the, the, the photographic quality of you know, the squid. Uh, sort of, um, certainly those images, the sequences where you intercut to the, the water and the river and that. Yes. That's okay. um, I mean, you, you, your own career as a photographer and, and 
I'm and sorry. In terms of your own career as a photographer and that sort of yes, thing. Yes. Yes. Did, 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 was that a big? Was that a major influence? Or? Oh, uh, most certainly. I did uh, studies of the principal sculptures, mm. photographic studies, before deciding how I wanted to use them. Very good. Yeah. Uh, any, any, any final questions? Sir, just at the back there, yeah. Uh, thank you for showing the film today. I thought it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I thought it was very evocative. I thought it was also very, very sad. Ah, yes. The film was made in 1961 when I think Eamon Valera was the Irish president. Yes. Do you think the film, I want to ask two questions actually, do you think the film treats both the Free Staters and the Republicans equally? And secondly, is given what happened subsequently, given our, our history afterwards, is there anything about the film you would have changed? Uh, uh, no, uh, there isn't. Uh, I think that the uh, uh, you must remember I'm prim primarily a Republican uh, and consequently I changed nothing. <laughs> Uh, any, any other questions? Uh, well, I think it just remains for me, George, to thank you again. Uh, it's been, been a wonderful evening, and uh, it's a great screening, and I think everyone here enjoyed it. And uh, maybe give you a round of applause. <laughs>